Um, so good morning, Oriel. Thank you. Okay, nice to see you again. Um, tell me, I would like you to explain to the audience a little bit about what Nimble is and how you ended up where you are today. Yeah, so Nimble Diagnostics is a medtech spin-off from three Catalan research institutes, the University of Barcelona, the UPC, and the IGTP. The IGTP is the research center for the Carruti Hospital, which is one of the largest hospitals in the Barcelona area. And I myself am a PhD in cardiovascular medicine. So the project itself was born um, through this collaborative effort that we do in, in universities. So we had a clinical need in, in our hospital, which is that currently once you have a heart attack, um, the first line of treatment is implanting a stent. Stent is this small metallic mesh tube that is used to reopen blocked arteries and restore the correct flow of blood over the fluids, depending on where it's placed. But it's mainly used in cardiovascular diseases and to treat heart attacks. And currently, once it's implanted, stents can become blocked or damaged, again, putting patient lives at risk, which affects um, up to a third of the cases during the first two years after implantation. And clinicians nowadays don't have any tool at all to know that the implanted stent is working properly. So during the clinical visits, it's the patient that says, hey, how is the device that I have implanted in my body working? It's doing well. And clinicians don't have an answer for that um, because the only way that you can check that is through invasive and complex procedure called tetrangiography. So you just don't do that in patients that seem fine. But then what you're doing is to increasing the incidence of complications that could be avoided if you know that there was an underlying problem. So with that, in mind, we, in, in the research center, start thinking, hey, how can we solve this problem? How can we know what's happening in the stent implanted in this patient? And then we uh, collaborated with the University of Barcelona, the physics department, to think together how that could be done. We knew that this should be a medical device. So we end up with the conclusion that using microwaves could have some potential um, to detect these type of issues. And then we partnered with the UPC, it's an engineering university in, in Catalonia, to create the first prototypes. And through that collaborative effort, we started um, developing new technologies, new methodologies to try and find out using microwave these type of issues. And we have validated it in silico with, of course, um, simulations. And then we moved into in vitro experiments um, in our lab testing different type of issues with the stand and, and seeing if we can get that signal or not. Then we moved into animal models. And uh, recently in March, 2022, we had, uh, incorporated the company because we had some pretty good results and we uh, thought that that could be translated into the clinical setting and help millions of patients worldwide. So that's a little bit how everything started. So tell me, how does it work? Is it a device that attaches to someone's chest? Is it like an MRI or a CT? Yeah, it's more similar to an ultrasound. So it's this computer-like device that you have on the outpatient clinic, let's say, and you have, instead of having one transducer, like an ultrasound, to create an image, we have two antennas. These antennas go on top of the skin, just near the stand location. So if it's a cardiac stand, you put it on the chest, of course, this does not require that much management. It has, it's quite easy to just put the right position, the antenna on, on the chest, click play, and in seconds, less than five seconds, you have this measurement and our uh, algorithms process the signal automatically. So in seconds, completely non-invasive, completely painless, you have uh, a measurement automatically um, uh, process. So you do not have an image to interpret. So it doesn't require a specialist to do this test. It can be, those, can be done in the primary care setting. It can be done by nurse staff. It can be done by any type of clinical staff. So the idea is that you have a very quick, easy to do, and effective measurement and monitoring. So now you can monitor these patients that are feeling well, but you don't know if next week they will have a heart attack. So you can be regularly checking these patients to identify problems early on and to adopt the right treatment at the right time once uh, you need to. 
Okay, so it's an outpatient procedure, correct? Yep, exactly. Okay, and where have you got this working currently? We are starting now our clinical tests. So we have finished the preclinical testing in 2023. We have created the prototype to be tested in humans, and we will start our clinical trial, the first in human trial, in September in our hospital in Canruti, uh, the, uh, the large hospital in Badalona, in, in New Barcelona. So okay. we will start with 120 patients and we will compare it to this invasive procedure that I was talking about, the catheter angiography, which is currently the only technique that you have available for clinicians to monitor. And so we will compare our technology to um, catheter angiography in these 120 patients. So if everything goes well, which we think it will, um, next year we will do the pivotal trial to get CMARC and start commercialization in 2026. Okay, and what classification is the device? It's a class 2A in Europe and class 2 in the US. Okay, all right. So it's a non-destructive test. Yeah. All right, perfect. What are your expectations and what are your investors' expectations over the next five years? Financially speaking or technologically speaking? <laughs> Um, but, I suppose patient outcome speaking, uh, rather than financially. Okay, um, patient outcomes, once we're in the clinic, we envision the technology to aid in three very specific uh, points in the patient journey. First, at the same moment of stem implantation for the first time, some problems can arise during the implantation because you have to inflate the stent inside the artery. And that procedure can break the stent, it can collapse, it can uh, have some problems. So first of all, identify that the procedure has gone well and so discharge the patient safely at home. That's the first application. Next, um, currently the patient journey requires three visits during the first year after implantation, usually at three weeks after implantation to know that the patient is feeling better, it's recovering well, etc then at six months and then at one year, and then it's yearly visits. So in Europe, it's not done, but in the US, in South America, in Asia, where many hospitals are private, um, at six months, they do receive this angiography, this complex, expensive, and invasive procedure that requires hospitalization, large doses of extra radiation, etc. Just to know that the stent is doing well, it's just to confirm that everything's going well, not because the patient is feeling bad or anything like that. It's just confirmatory. So we can substitute these specific angiographies with our technology. And the main application, of course, is this um, monitoring over time of the patients objectively, because you currently it, 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 the, the current patient management is subjective. It's just a conversation between a cardiologist and the patient. And if you're feeling fine, I assume that everything's well and you can go home, but that doesn't mean that tomorrow you'll have a second heart attack. Um, so we can objectivize these visits, have this monitoring over time, and so when we can identify problems before um, these are, uh, that are too severe to, to treat. So the idea is to prevent heart attacks instead of treating it. So what we expect to see in the next five years, of course, is entering the clinical setting, start our expansion in, in the EU and the US um, of our device and start to see these identifications early on so that clinicians can optimize the treatment and can prevent these recurrent heart attacks uh, on these patients. That's what we hope to see. Okay, perfect. How many people in the company right now? Um, working in the company, we are 10, um, but we are expanding quite rapidly and we are expecting to incorporate three additional positions, especially from engineering and clinical perspective uh, in the next three to four months. And when are you envisaging your CE mark? Um, the CE mark, we expect to have it mid end 2026. Uh, so we can start, of course, commercialization 2026, maybe early 2027. Okay, perfect. Um, I think it's a, a game changer for technology. I wish you all the very best.